As more online time shifts to mobile devices and networks, our desktop-first design and development processes aren't giving us the reach we need in today's connected world. A mobile-first approach to creating components and applications allows us to connect with many more consumers without compromising the experiences we're trying to create for everyone. Let's look at how. With mobile-first responsive web design, we start with a set of baseline defaults that will work on just about any device. When we detect a certain set of capabilities, we can actually enhance the interactivity or offer up additional content to people when their devices can handle it. One more thing we can do as well is use additional screen space to change the interface and account for the fact that we have more space to play with. Now what this adds up to is a spectrum of basic to enhanced experiences that allows everyone access to our content and the ability to get things done. To illustrate, let's look at an example. It's common for us to design for large screen experiences first and then shrink things down as screen size gets smaller. So a maps interface with an embedded set of controls will shrink down until it becomes almost unusable on small screen sizes. Not only is it hard to interact within this amount of screen space, but the additional bandwidth and download costs associated with all this JavaScript and imagery are something that our poor mobile devices can't handle very well. What we're seeing, in effect, is starting from the large screen experience first, making concessions for our smaller and smaller screens, but really trying to force the enhanced experience down to everyone, regardless of whether they can handle it or not. As a counterexample, let's look at an adaptive map solution. Here, we start with a mobile-first default. That is, instead of an embedded map full of interactivity, it's just a little image showing the same information. This image is really lightweight, can display anywhere, and doesn't incur heavy bandwidth costs. We can also enhance if we detect a particular capability. For example, providing a link to a native maps application where someone can get a much more immersive and rich experience with this location information. Now, as screen size enhances, what we'll do is switch from this little image to that interactive embedded map, full of all of its rich interactive goodness. This additional content, however, only comes in when screen size and capabilities are available. We're not trying to force it everywhere, especially on devices that can't handle it very well. For another example, we can look at a typical e-commerce site. Here we've got some baseline information about buying shirts, but we've also provided some links to similar t-shirts and reviews. Now what we can do is actually tap on these on small screens, see those similar shirts, close that up, and tap on the reviews if we like, and read all the information. So everything's available to us, it's just not displayed by default. However, when we load the screen on a larger size device, all this additional content appears. You can see this happen when I shrink down the page one more time and show that now these areas are exposed. If I reload, you'll see once again that these things are closed by default. So we're providing access to the content without incurring a bandwidth penalty for devices that can't handle it very well. And this is the essence of designing mobile-first components. We start with lightweight defaults to have the broadest reach possible. We then detect capabilities and make adaptations to our interface to account for the new things these devices can do. Larger screens also provide us an opportunity to enhance. This combination of defaults and enhancements together makes sure everybody can have an experience and also have the best experience possible based on what each of their devices can do.